Hi, it's Dave again. Um, we're going to do another video on heartburn now. Uh, we're going to look at another particular cause of heartburn um, that is actually relatively common, believe it or not, even though it's not really uh, spoken about in many doctor's offices. Now, it's a concept called dysbiosis, and dysbiosis basically means uh, imbalance in the microbes in the gut, in the microbiome. And the dysbiosis can take uh, a number of different forms. It's not going to be the same in every individual person. But there are probably three main types of dysbiosis in terms of bad bugs that shouldn't really be there overgrowing in the digestive system. And they are, number one, this concept of SIBO or SIBO. And that means small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. We also have parasites. Parasites is probably the least of our concerns when it comes to heartburn, although parasites can cause certain problems with the upper gastrointestinal symptoms. There's a couple of worm species, for example, that can live quite high up the small intestine and they can lead to very similar symptoms uh, uh, as people would have when they have things like stomach ulcers. Um, one of them in particular is called a strongyloids or strongyloides, which is a tiny little worm. There's also yeast and fungal overgrowth, um, most commonly known of, as candida, um, but candida is not the only yeast and fungal organism that can overgrow in the digestive system. There's actually quite a few different ones. So candida, um, when it's tested, as some of you may have had a candida test, for example, um, if candida is tested uh, and you actually have a different type of yeast or fungal overgrowth, it's not candida, then it might not be reported uh, on the test results, even though um, you've had the test done. And so these three different kind of major groupings of bad bugs kind of overgrowing or inhabiting uh, the digestive system when they shouldn't really be there are the three main things that we want to worry about. Now parasites would typically cause heartburn through irritation of the upper small intestine, but SIBO and yeast and fungal overgrowth, usually the reason why the heartburn happens is because um, they ferment carbohydrate foods okay, when they're overgrowing in the system. And that creates gas here. So if you can imagine putting a balloon in your small intestine where these bugs are overgrowing, and then you inflate the balloon, well, the pressure increases in all directions. It goes forwards, it goes backwards, it goes down, and it goes up. And it increases something called the intra-abdominal pressure, intra-abdominal pressure. And as the intra-abdominal pressure increases, it pushes the contents of the small intestine and the stomach upwards. And that can then push acid and stomach contents up into the esophagus. And that's one of the reasons why you'll typically get heartburn as a result of having these overgrowths. Now, they don't always cause heartburn. You can have diarrhea and no heartburn. You can have bloating and no heartburn. You might just feel tired, you might have mood disturbances, not sleep very well. There are many different presentations of having these bad bugs overgrowing in the system. But specifically when it comes to heartburn, these are the main mechanisms by which they're going to exert an influence. And the only way you can know what is going on and what the specific pattern is in your digestive system is to run the appropriate testing. You can't guess as to which one of these groups of bad bugs is causing the problem. And remember in the previous video, we also said that H. pylori infections can also create heartburn. So you could literally add H. pylori into the middle of this mix here and say that you've got parasites, SIBO, yeast and fungal overgrowth, and H. pylori. Any or all of them in combination could be contributing to the problem. So it's really important to get properly tested. So again, one of the problems is with these bugs when they get pretty nasty, when they overgrow in large amounts, they can create a lot of other problems in the body. And this is why I think it's really important when you have heartburn to not just assume that the heartburn is a throwaway symptom that many people have and there's nothing to worry about. If you have heartburn on a regular basis and you don't deal with it, and if that heartburn is being caused by a pattern um, with bad bugs such as these, you could in five, 10 years time, or even earlier than that, start to develop other problems in the body that lead to you feeling really, really unwell. So my recommendation is to take this really seriously and consider getting the optimal testing uh, to figure out exactly what's going on 
if you have regular heartburn. Now, of course, if you change your diet and you cut certain foods out and your heartburn just goes away, then you don't need to worry about this. So diet changes, I think, would always come first. But if they don't work, you still feel as though you've got a lot of problems going on in there, then you've got to get the testing done because there may be something in there that leads to potentially difficulties further on later in your life if you're not careful. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Look forward to speaking with you again on uh, the next video. And in the next video, we're actually going to talk about hiatal hernias and how structural problems in your musculature um, and your posture can also contribute to heartburn as well, because that's another thing that's not often talked about in medical circles. So hope you've enjoyed it, as I say, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you.